I'm back, and with a fully assembled leg, I've got a lot of good updates coming and a couple of mishaps, but first, a build montage. So, that didn't go as planned. I wanted this video to showcase the leg's full range of motion, but as you just saw, we had a bit of a technical difficulty. Turns out, the version 2 motor controller board has this fun little quirk where the 24 to 5 volt regulator fails and sends 24 volts straight to the Arduino, releasing the magic smoke. But hey, this is all part of the learning process. I see it as a chance to walk through the leg's design a bit and address some of the great questions that you guys had in the last video. One question that I saw and that I really didn't address in the previous video is why I decided to use the rolling contact joint on a larger assembly such as this. I opted for the rolling contact joint at the knee because it mimics a dog's knee's motion much more closely than a standard bearing joint, but it also has a bonus benefit of having a built-in gear reduction. By using this design, I get more travel per joint degrees meaning I can use a lower gear ratio motor and keep the joint easy to backdrive. Speaking of backdrive ability, I noticed a lot of comments mentioning that these DC planetary gear set motors would be difficult or impossible to backdrive. And for you, I only have one thing to say. I also noticed a lot of comments talking about positional versus force vector control for actually getting this dog to walk. Many of you suggested using force vector control instead of just the positional control for more natural movement, and I totally agree eventually. For now, I'm keeping it simple with positional control. The V3 motor boards will support both current sensing and angle sensing, so when I'm ready to upgrade to force control, all it will take is a software update. And on to the upgrades. 
We'll spend working overtime on the next MAR controller board revisions. We're replacing the large knee board with the smaller skinny board, which offer all the same functionality just in a smaller package. This will reduce the cost when ordering the boards through our partners at JLCMC and their parent company, JLCPCB. JLCMC reached out and offered to help sponsor this project and a number of upcoming projects, and I can't explain how grateful I am for their help. I'd already used their services for the V1 and V2 MAR controller boards, and so when they reached out, it was a no-brainer to accept their help. And trust me, we need their help. We're also replacing the Arduino with a ESP32C3, and we're replacing I2C with CAN bus. Along with the new motor controllers, the legs also gain some upgrades. I'm routing all the wires inside the carbon fiber tubes, improving the foot for better terrain adaptation, and making sure every part secures to the tubes, no more press fit. Since the robo leg didn't go as I planned today, let me give you a sneak peek of the other stuff that I've been working on. Will and I have been building a project we're calling Open Phones. It's a DIY headphone speaker hybrid using a iPhone 15 Pro loudspeaker, custom PCBs with ESP32s for Bluetooth input, and a programmable digital signal processor to allow users to fine tune the audio output. Also, I'm consolidating my self-hosted Proxmox cluster that hosts my website into a single AMD EPIC server. If you're interested in self-hosting or want more info on the RoboDog project, check out my website. I keep a huge running list of project ideas, and if you beat me to one of them, let me know. That's all I got for this video. If you've got suggestions for this project or suggestions for a future project, let me know. If you want to download the CAD files for this, uh, they're on my website.